it to McKinney Courts to play tennis. Playing a guy that used to live in Texas. His name is Kevin. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Beautiful family. Very successful in his work. And he moved from Texas to Tennessee. And he's in uh, Dallas on business. And asked me if I could hit with him today. Tennessee is a great state. It's got low property taxes and no income tax. Texas has high property taxes and no income tax. So Tennessee's a great place to go and live. People love it there. So many people are moving to Tennessee. But, you know, uh, I've been talking a lot about the Ten Commandments and the law, the moral law, the ceremonial laws, and how 90% of the churches, in order to weasel their way out of the Sabbath, they, uh, they confuse those two laws. They, they lump them in all into one, like the Torah, which covers everything. And they're confused on that. Jesus did seven miracles on the Sabbath. That's how important the Sabbath is. He, he went out of his way to actually show the true meaning of the Sabbath. He made the Sabbath in Genesis. He, you have to understand the Sabbath was here before the ceremonial laws. It was here before sin. It doesn't point to Jesus in that way. Those shadows, those ceremonial laws point to Christ. They were to be done away with at the cross. Had Adam never sinned, we'd still be keeping the Sabbath. Because it's a gift to mankind. It was made for us. And it's a mystery to me why the evangelicals don't use logic and reason to put that together. They view basically God had two ways of saving people. You know, the Jews through the law that failed and then the dispensation of grace. God has never had two ways of saving people. The everlasting gospel means exactly what it says. Everlasting. From, from when he killed an animal to cover Adam and Eve. Now to kill an animal, you got to shed blood. You have the gospel there. And then, of course, he promised when he cursed uh, the serpent, he showed the gospel, the blood gospel. And uh, and then there's other Sabbaths. There's the month, the week, the annual Sabbaths. The seventh-day Sabbath, at the heart of the moral law, the Ten Commandments, was for all men for all time. He'll even be in heaven. Isaiah says, from Sabbath to Sabbath. Now they'll twist and they'll turn and they'll say, that's the Jewish. And none of it makes sense when you really sit down and logically uh, put it together. And uh, there's a text in Isaiah that I came across yesterday in one of those Pastor Carter tapes where you have both the moral law and the ceremonial laws mentioned in the same text. Um, I think it's Isaiah 56, might be 57, but he says it, something about they'll bring all the sacrifices and talking about on the Sabbath into my house, it shall be a house for all nations. Start. So there you have the Sabbath and the sacrifices in the same text. One of those are gone. The sacrifices. Jesus is our sacrifice. It was fulfilled in Christ. But the moral law is never gone. Lying, killing, cheating. I mean, it just makes... They, they make no sense. And there was the Ark of the Covenant that was carried in front of the people. Not the ceremonial laws. It was the Ark of the Covenant that contained the Ten Commandments that the blood was sprinkled over. That Those define sin. What is it about it they don't get? 
If you lie, you sin. If you steal your neighbor's uh, newspaper in the morning, that's a sin. It's theft. If you kill somebody for money or for any reason other than, you know, the, the capital punishment, which is a whole different issue, but you can't kill people. That's that's a sin. If you worship another god other than Jesus, that's a sin. If you bow down, that those are sin. And in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of it, those Ten Commandments, it it is the largest one of all. Look at them. The Sabbath is the largest commandment. It's the only one that says remember. You think God knew that we'd forget? No other commandment says remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Or no other commandment starts, you know, it doesn't say remember not to lie, remember not to kill, remember not to. No, those say thou shalt. And yet, God said, and remember, everything God does, He does with a purpose. There's not one thing that God does not do without purpose. There's no fat in God. He's as lean and perfect and efficient. I mean, just look at the order of the universe, look at the math. Uh, we now know that the universe was off by an inch. Uh, life couldn't be sustained. That's how perfect God is. And so he's, he puts in that word that he wrote with his own finger. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Why do you think he put remember? So um, those are the things that... Uh, the evangelicals, the new covenant, all these churches that teach the rapture. I'm going to deal with that issue uh, after the Sabbath issue because the rapture is a is a is not biblical either. When Christ comes, everybody's going to see him. Everybody on earth, every I, I don't. Know. <laughs> it's funny. Every eye shall see him. That's exactly what the Bible says. But they they say no, not every eye is going to see him. Uh, and you know what they do? They take the 70 weeks of Daniel, take that end week. And, and what they don't even realize is that whole doctrine was started by a Jesuit back in the 1400s. I forget his name, Ribera, something like a Jesuit. Because they had to figure out a way so they wouldn't be the counterfeit, the, 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 the counterfeit church in Revelation. Because the reformers had all identified Rome as a counterfeit, Martin Luther, uh, and, and so many others. They knew that that church was the one described in the Bible as the unfaithful one. She's drunk with her with her uh, wickedness. She persecuted the saints. She speaks great blasphemy. Man can't forgive your sin. No priest can forgive your sin, absolve you. Only Jesus can. And um, in Daniel it says she's she sought to change set times in law. Only one commandment has to do with the time, Sabbath time, holy time. And she admits she changed it. Got to give her credit for that at least. It's easy to, it's easy, fairly easy to, uh, to interpret prophecy. You, in fact, you let the Bible interpret it for itself. In Daniel, <clears throat> I think it's chapter 8 or 9 or maybe 10, I don't know. They tell us what Daniel's dream are, who those nations are that would rule the world. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece. The last one would ro be Rome. And that, that's verifiable history. The Roman Empire. And it says, out of this empire would arise an especially fierce, wicked power, different from the other four. Well, she's still there. And she's huge. And she murdered millions of, of uh, people during the Dark Ages. Now, here's an ominous thing. It says her wound would be healed. And... Uh, Again, we're not talking about individuals here because Roman Catholics are among the most uh, godly people 
and I admire their commitment um, and God's going to call them out they'll come out because in Revelation he says come out of her my people and worship God worship the creator it's funny the words he used come out of her come out of Babylon my people and worship him who made heaven earth and sea and that's the Sabbath memorial the creator <clears throat> so anyway I'm on my way to play tennis it's a beautiful it's gonna be a great day I have to play I'm gonna play for, we'll play for about an hour then I'll go to the gym then I'll go home and walk and uh, I hate to see I love summer I don't want it I don't want no cold you know what you know what you sit around and you eat and you get fat in the cold and you get and you eat drink hot chocolate and eat donuts and hot and sit around and do nothing no thanks uh, summers for activity and and getting in shape and eating good fruit and uh, there's not gonna be no cold in uh, well I don't I don't think there will be but anyway God bless you all there's Toyota hardly any cars there on their dealer wow and the ones that are left are the Oh, they got a few. Uh, that's Toyota headquarters right there. That's their North American headquarters. That's the one that moved from Torrance to Frisco. It's about 4,000 people work there. They actually have a track that goes around it to test cars. Right now, we can the, uh, the, the top guy there reports to Japan. <clears throat> This is Frisco right here. It continues to grow and there's no stopping it. Up there is Frisco. Oh, that's Plano. I'm sorry. That's Plano. And that's Frisco up over there. Uh, the Dallas Star. Just a quarter mile. I can see it from here. That's where the Cowboys train. <clears throat> and... Um, I'm going to the courts in McKinney, so I'm going to have a good session. That's Plano over there, folks. Plano and Frisco are next to each other. The 121 runs right through them. All right, have a good day. God bless. Read the Bible. Let's read the Bible together and get ready for the second coming. Thanks.